Shalom, coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of the Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. This lesson is going to be titled Wheat and Tears. It's going to be a short one, but an important one nonetheless. So Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Right? So the Lord Yahweh Shai referred to Simon as wheat. Right? Because wheat is what you want. Right? Wheat is good. You know, it produces a lot of flour, etc. Right? Which make you can make cake, bread, whatever, right? Um, you know, from my understanding, tares is like, uh, I'm not sure if it's a type of wheat, but it looks just like wheat, right? It looks exactly like wheat, right? You can think of it as a weed, right? In your garden, right? But it looks exactly like wheat. But in this verse, the most uh, Yahweh, Yitzhak, Yahweh Shai, referred to Simon as wheat, okay? Because wheat is what's good, right? You know, it's what you, it brings fruit, it brings... Uh, you benefit from it. It creates things, right? Tears doesn't create anything. It's just, it's just, it, it, it disrupts things, you know? If you had tear and you mix it with weed, it doesn't work. You can't do that because tear, there's no, there's no substance in tear, right? And um, you know what? Let's just look up the word. Tear. Kind of fodder plant, perhaps cognate with Wheat from Germanic. Kind of millet grass. Uh, oh, there you go. See? Matthew. To render Greek zizania as a weed among corn. So it's referred to as a weed. Right? So there's no fruit in a weed. Right? It's just an annoyance. Oh, wow. I didn't know this. Uh, this is the second... Allowance, allowable difference between gross and net width. Detection made gross. Okay. So then you have late 15th century Anglo French tear, wastage in goods, deficiency, imperfection from Italia, Tara. Medieval Latin, Tara from Arabic, Tara. Literally, thing deducted or rejected, that which is thrown away. <laughs> wow. From ta Taraha. To reject. Okay, perfect. Right? So we're going to go to Luke 31. Oh, this is too long. Luke, Luke 3, Slack. Almost there. Okay, Luke 3 and 17. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will th thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his gardener, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable, right? And wheat, I believe a gardener, um, let's just look it up, I believe it's like some type of storage, yeah, a place in which anything is laid by or up, a storehouse, right, granary, so it's where you put your grains, and chaff, a stock of grain from which the kernels have been beaten out, straw broken up by the threshing machine. Yeah, so it's useless. It's just like the 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 waste, right? So you can read the scripture again. It says, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, right? And will gather the wheat, because wheat is what's good, you know, in his gardener, which is his storehouse. But the chaff, which is just waste, he will burn with fire unquenchable. And chaff... The waste is um, the heathens, right? The heathens, other nations, right? And the top ones are the Edomites. <laughs> so they're going to just be burnt, right? And the reason why I went into this title is because I was watching a lesson by Apostle Aranlab. He was going to the Wheat and the Tares, and someone was, I don't know who the guy was. Apparently, there was some Hamite with some guy. I don't remember exactly what Apostle Aranlab said, but basically the situation was... The brother was talking to the Hamite. The Hamite was starting to get the word. And he went into the scripture saying that your spirit bears bear witness with my spirit that we are children of the, uh, the Lord. Roughly paraphrasing. Which is true, right? Because you're going to have 
uh, um, Israelites that look like the other nations, right? But that's not the same thing as when we're talking about tares, right? Because tares look like the Israelites, but they're not Israelites. That's the difference. Not, they don't look like the other nations. They look like um, Israelites, which is why I went into wheat and tares, right? Tares look exactly like wheat, but they're not wheat, right? So you refer to here, and this is just another uh, metaphor, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and... When he, and he will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And the chaff is just referring to as a tares. Things, something that's not wanted, rejected, right? Useless, wasteless. Okay? So now we're going to go to Matthew, because we're going to get into the wheat and the tares, the actual scripture that, um, you know, has that. Uh, actually, it's luck. We just, it's the same, same thing. Um... I'm going to go to 13. Just type it in. 13 and 25. Okay. Matthew 13, 25. This is Yahweh Shai talking. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So that's Esau. Esau is the enemy of uh, Israel, right? So he slept when we slept, basically when we were asleep. He was sleeping with our woman. That's what he was doing. Sleeping with our woman during the slave time, sleeping with our woman, having kids, you know, or, you know, even when, even, even, even during those, uh, past those slave times, you know, uh, Jake was allowing Edomites into their family, you know, having kids with their daughters because, you know, having a, a so-called, uh, white man in your family line, you know, it brings more prestige, you know, they have better, uh, accommodations in society. Right. So they had no problem letting them in, having kids with their daughters. Right. And mentally, they were asleep. Spiritually, they were asleep because if they are meant, if they're spiritually awake, they wouldn't have allowed that. Right. If they knew they were Israelites and they knew that that was their enemy, they wouldn't allow that uh, Edomite to come and have kids with their 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 daughters. Right. And went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Right? So then now you have tares appearing. You have these kids that look like Jake, but they're really just tares because the seed, it always comes back from the seed, the man. So that seed is of a tear, is of an Edomite, which is a tear, right? Which is unwanted to the Most High because Most High says that he is, um, Esau is, uh, is um, he's, he hates Esau. Jacob he loved, but Esau he hated, roughly paraphrasing, right? Um. Okay, we keep reading. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Right? He's like, didn't you put good seed in the field? Why, where did these tares come from? Right? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this, which is Esau, Edom, so-called white man. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? So he's asking, okay, so that was the enemy. Do you want us to go take out these tares? Right? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares and ye root up also the wheat with them. So he's saying that you might, going to try to take out the tares, you might take out some of the wheat because they look exactly the same, right? So um, back to the Apostle Ryan's video, you know, you might have people that are saying, oh, you know, you have white guys in GMS or whatever, look, looking like Edomites, um, right? First of all, if they look like Edomites, it doesn't matter because if they're, they're preaching the word, then they're Jake, they're Israelites. If it doesn't make sense to them, they're preaching and it makes total sense, right? They're Israelites. But um, this point, what it's talking about here is saying that if you have, um, well, if you know, like if you have um, tares or uh, uh, Edomites, right? Or other nations that look like Israelites, right? Um, because we know that they exist. There's tares amongst you know Israel, so you can't go and go to this guy and say, "Well, I'm going to take you." You know, you know, kind of like try to separate everybody and say, "No, you're you're an Israelite. No, you're an Israelite. No, you're a tear, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. No, you're Edomite, right? Because they all look the same, right? And even the the uh, the, the scriptures say to be uh, watchful of your brethren, be circumspect. Roughly paraphrasing, even apostle the apostles say there's um, agents in camps. 
You know, there's agents, right? Um, agents provocateurs. So you have some agent provocateurs that look like Israelites, but really are Edomites. If you chase chase uh, trace their blood the bloodline down, right? So back to the point, right? That's why um, Yahweh Shai said no, because you might if you try to take up the tears, you might take up some of the wheat with it, right? Um, and it's not our job to separate the wheat from the tares. That's the angels that are going to do that. Because they can see in the spirit who is a wheat and who is a tare. Who is an Israelite and who is an Edomite. Who is an elect and who is a two-third. You know? Just in general, but we're just talking about wheat and tares, right? Because tares are not Israelites. Um, okay. Verse 29. But he said, Nay, let's... While ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. So he said, let them stay together. Let them grow till they're fully grown till the harvest. Because when it's harvest, that means everything's fully grown. It's fully, it's bearing fruit, right? And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, which are the angels, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Right? So the tares are going to be burned right, from these missiles, Isomia missiles, when World War III pops up, and also the, the, the lasers from the chariots. And the wheat are going to be put into his barn, which is the, the chariot. Right? So they're going to be saved. Okay? Um, yeah. And then we're going to jump to 47, and it's just another example. Uh, okay, Matthew 13 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, right? Of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away, right? So the same thing, right? Because you come into truth, it's like a net. So it catches everything, right? Good and bad, wheat and tares, right? Now, the angels are the ones that are going to, uh, um, uh, what's the word? They're going to gather the good into vessels, right? In storehouses, something for a container, which is also the chariots, but cast the bad away, and the bad are going to be cast away, right? Which are the tares in this example that we're talking about, right? You can also say two thirds if you want to say that too, but we're just talking about the wheat and the tares. Anyways, um, the point has been made. I hope this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. I like to close out by saying Ka Hala Yahawa Bahashim Yahawa Shai Bahashim Rakha Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Death and destruction to his wicked kingdom and two thirds as well. Kwam Yasharala Abad Babal Shalom.